This occurring challenge is called fair rations. Here we have some people lined up and we need to distribute some loaves of bread. We have two rules for distributing the bread. The first rule is what they have here. So in fact, anytime we give a loaf of bread, we are actually giving two loaves of bread because we're not only giving to the person we intend to give it to, but we are also giving one to the person right in front of them or behind them. The second rule is what they have here. After we distribute the loaves of bread, each person in the line is supposed to have an even number of loaves. So this is how we can solve this challenge. Let's say we have a list of five people. They are all lined up and they all have some loaves of bread. So at the beginning, the first person in the line has two loaves of bread. The second person has three. The third one has four and the remaining two have five and six respectively. By the time we are done distributing the bread, everyone is supposed to have an even number of loaves. So three is not an even number and five is not an even number. We need to minimize the number of loaves that we give away. So we can't say we're going to give one loaf to that person to make it four and one loaf to that person to make it six. Although that will make the list valid, we won't respect instructions because like they say, anytime we give a loaf to a certain person, we need to give one to the person right in front of them or the person right before them. So of course it depends uh, how you look at this list. If you look at it from left to right or from right to left, it doesn't matter. The point is whenever you give a loaf to a person, one of the neighbors needs to receive a loaf as well. So this is how we could solve the challenge. We could update the values of this array because this is going to be an array. First of all, we see two, two is an even number. So we don't need to give any loaf to that person. Three here is not an even number and four is also going to receive one. So four becomes five in the new lists. And then because we updated these two values at the same time, once we reach here, we can also increase that value. So five here becomes six. And we also give one to this person here. So now five from the original list becomes six as well. And when we encounter this element here, number six, we don't increase the value because six is already an even number. So by the time we are done updating our list, it will be like this. So when we updated three and four at the same time, we gave away two loaves of bread. So zero here became two. And then when we increase the values here, because four became five, and then we increased five to six along with the neighbor on the right, then we gave away two more loaves of bread. So two here became four. And in our solution, we need to return the number of loaves of bread that we give away. So we need to return four. Now, what happens if we receive a list like this? So we give one loaf to that person, one. So one becomes two. We've given away one loaf of bread. Obviously, we need to give one to the next person. So two here from the original list becomes three. Now we've given away two loaves of bread. Our list here doesn't meet the requirements. Everyone in this array is supposed to have an even number of loaves. In other words, our updated array is supposed to contain only even numbers or even integers. If we increase the count of three here to four, meaning that at that point we've given away three loaves of bread, we also need to increase the one before it. If one of them becomes even, the other one becomes odd. So in this case, for this solution, we need to print no on the string. Now you might ask yourself, how can a function in C++ return an integer or a string. I'll show you a very easy trick to pass all the test cases in this challenge. So this here is a solution. It's called federations and it takes in a vector of integers that is called B. So B here would be something like this, or it could be like in my initial array. After our update, it became two, four, and then six, six, six. Um, I forgot to show you guys the sample input, but they have this same array here. And by the time they're done updating, this is what they have two, four, six, six, six. So the same answer as we had here. Now back to my solution here, I'm starting the number of loaves at zero. So I have this int variable that is called loaves and the value here is zero. I have I here because I want to iterate through my vector and I'm not going to use a for loop. I want to use a while loop. I also want to access the last element in my array. So I'm going to say here and equals b dot size, meaning the size of the array minus one. So at that point, n is going to have a value equal to the last index inside my vector. The reason why this matters is because here I'm saying, if i is less than n, do something. So in fact, this while loop here is going to run until the second to last element in my array. Now, why is this important? We only want to find odd values inside the array because we want to minimize the number of loaves that we give away. So if this here returns one, it means the element at index i inside of the vector is an odd value. So here I'm increasing that value by one. This doesn't really matter, it's optional. What really matters is this thing here. So the elements at index i plus one also needs to be incremented by one. So here I'm saying increase the value of loaves by two. So plus equals is the same thing 
as me saying loaves plus two. Regardless of whether I update the values or not, I need to increase the value of i by one because I want to iterate through my vector. By the time I'm done, because I'm updating my vector from the beginning to the end, I need to verify here if the last element here, which is three, is an odd number, then I need to return negative one in my function. Make sure you don't return zero because if you have an array like this, let's say two, four, six, eight, and then 10, when our solutions function is done executing, our array is going to look like this. And notice here that we don't have any difference. The reason why we don't have any difference is because this if statement is never going to take effect. So by the time we reach here, we check is the last element inside our vector an odd value? You verify here, nope, it's still an even value. And therefore we're going to return this one here. But remember here that at the top, loaves was initialized to zero. So we need to return the value zero. And therefore zero here is a valid return value for this occurring challenge. So if we have an error, like we were not able to miss the requirements, then we need to return something like negative one. If we were not able to miss the requirements after updating our array, we need to print no on the screen. So in fact, we don't need to return a string here, so long as we return a value that makes it possible for us to track. Were we able to meet the requirement or not? We can simply scroll down to the main section here, which we can edit and look at this line here. They have int result equals whatever our function returns. I've added this line myself. You can check here if the function returns negative one, then use f out to print no on the screen. Otherwise, simply print whatever value our function returns, which will be the number of loaves that you give away. So when you begin this challenge, I think they're only going to have this right here, f out and results. So you need to add this logic here yourself. So now let's run this code and see if whatever we did makes sense. So we've passed the two sample test cases and I'm now going to submit this code. And we've also passed the test cases. As a last note, um, I gave you guys an example and I said, if all the values inside of your original array are even values, then you will need to return zero. And this here is a perfect example if you look at test case 20. So the expected output is zero. So anyway, that's it guys for this Akarang challenge. If you like my solution, please subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, and I'll catch you next time.